Bible, that was one sentence. Verses 15 to 23. And it's about Jesus. This morning, uh, we're continuing the, the theme of Jesus. We've looked at Jesus in the past. Uh, we saw Jesus in creation, you know, before creation. We saw Jesus in prophecy. All the Old Testament you know, speaks of, of the coming of the Christ. And last week, we looked at Jesus in the past uh, from his incarnation, when Jesus came uh, and became a, a man, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. The Bible says Jesus lived and died to save his people from their sin. Yeah, that's why he came. And he rose again, and he, he lives to keep us. It's a, such an important subject that we understand who Jesus is, who he's always been, and what he's done. The Bible says he's the one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You know, people try to go a lot of different ways, uh, but it's only through Jesus. Today we want to look at what Jesus is doing now. Now I, I know you know that Jesus is doing things, but uh, so we don't always think about how important our relationship with the Lord Jesus is now. Uh, sometimes we get so caught up thinking about what he has done that we, we forget that he is our Savior now. And he's doing uh, so much for us. Uh, we're going to, uh, the first verse we probably turn to would be in Philippians. If, if you were still in Ephesians, it's just the next book to the right. But one of the things we know that Jesus is doing is Jesus is reigning. Jesus is reigning in heaven. Um, as you're turning there to Philippians, Colossians says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. You know, when Jesus ascended, uh, he took back his rightful place uh, in glory. Uh, when, when he gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28, when he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, uh, that word power there is the word authority. Uh, he has all authority. He doesn't have a bit, and God the Father has a bit, and God the Holy Spirit has a bit. God has all authority, and Jesus is God. Uh, Jesus is reigning. If you're looking in Philippians chapter 2 there, just remind ourselves that uh, when Jesus came, uh, you know, we think about that at Christmas, and uh, unfortunately, some people only think about him as a baby, uh, but he did grow up, and he did have a, a ministry that he accomplished. But when Jesus came, he humbled himself. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, it was humbling for the Lord just to come as a man. It was the expression he uses, made in the likeness of men. But then as a man, he humbled himself and became our Savior. He died for our sins. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Uh, he, he humbled himself. But now, see, now it's different. He's no longer the babe in the manger. He's the, the great God of eternity. The next time we, we see Jesus, uh, it'll be a whole different story. Uh, you read in the Revelation, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, magnificent. But in, in verse 9 there of Philippians 2, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, Jesus is reigning now. Jesus is, is ruling. He is exalted. He's back to where he started. And when we read from, from John, it talked about in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God, and now he's... He's back. In uh, John 17, when Jesus prayed, He said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify Thy Son, that Thy Son also may glorify Thee. And He said in verse 4, I've glorified Thee on the earth. I've finished the work which Thou gavest Me to do. And now, that's what we're talking about, is what Jesus is doing now. O Father, glorify Thou Me with Thine own self. He says, put Me back where I belong with You. Uh, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Uh, he's at the right hand of the Father. 
And we read there in, in Philippians, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That's the place of authority. Uh, that's who Jesus is. That's what he's doing. Uh, some great verses there in Ephesians about who Jesus is. Verse 21 uh, Verse 20 said, he's at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing thing. Our, our God reigns, and Jesus is the Lord of glory. It's a, the place of authority. Uh, Peter put it this way, and I, I, I like to hear the specifics of this. It's 1 Peter 3.22. Talking about uh, the resurrection of Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Jesus is not an angel. Jesus is not a created being. Uh, Jesus is God. He came, he stepped out from eternity to do the work of salvation. And now he's at uh, the right hand of the Father. Uh, Jesus is reigning. If you turn to John chapter 14, this is probably... One of the best known things for Christians that we know what Jesus is doing. I think probably already has done. Uh, John 14, he's preparing. In talking to his disciples, they'd had some kind of discouraging things to say. He had just said to Peter, you're going to deny me. But then he says in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for those who, who know him and, and love him. And uh, what a blessing that is. Now, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like he probably already has it done. But uh, maybe not. Maybe he just, you know, working on it the whole time. But uh, he's preparing a place. And one of the things that that entails, Hebrews 6.20 talks about him being our forerunner. It's not just that he's making a room for us to live in. Uh, Jesus uh, is the forerunner, the one who goes ahead of us and makes things ready. You, you've had that happen sometimes. You know, something's going on and somebody gets there ahead of time and they make sure everything's going to work. You know, they, they make the plans and they, they get it all ready. Uh, Hebrews 6.20 says, Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And he's gone ahead to, to prepare for us. Corinthians gives it a different picture. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, it basically says that he's at the head of the parade of life. <laughs> you know, when you're talking about resurrection, when you're talking about eternal life, Jesus went first. He prepared the way for us. Uh, you, you know, we, as Christians, we have such a blessing knowing the one who's gone ahead. Religion in the world in general is based on fear. And uh, they don't know. You know they, don't, they don't know about life and death. But we know one who's been there and come back. And uh, has told us in the way and is the way. In, um, see, where am I here? 1 Corinthians 15, 23 was the verse I was headed for. It's, it says, every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. And I'm told that in the original language, that, that has to do, it's, it's like a parade. He's the first, and we're following in his, his train. He's at the head of the parade of life. And he's preparing a place for us, making sure that everything is, is in place. I love how the Bible puts it in Hebrews 6, 19. It said, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, wherein the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus. The picture I get is that Jesus has gone to heaven and he's, he's sunk that anchor into the rock of ages and, and that's what's connected to us. You know, we have an eternal, secure place that Jesus has prepared for us. And the Bible says that we're going to share his glory. You know, we're going to be with him. Uh, when Jesus was praying there in John 17, he said, And the glory which thou gavest me I've given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Later he said, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Now, we're going to be with the Lord. He's prepared a place. It's sure. It's secure. 
You know, you might have had it happen where you expected to go somewhere, you expected to do something, and you couldn't do it. Uh, I remember having that happen. We were, we were going to go as a, a, do some preaching, and, and we got there. It was too many people to fit in the car. We, actually, we got in the car, and, and the car would hit the tires. <laughs> and so the person driving said, somebody's got to get out. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that's not going to happen when it comes to heaven. God's not going to say, oh, listen, there's too many people here. Somebody's got to go. <laughs> now, our place is secure. He's prepared a place for us. The, the anchor is set, and we're going to share his glory. What a blessing. And not only does he say he's prepared that place, but he's coming again. He's going to receive us unto himself. We don't have to make our own way there. He's going to come and collect us, and that's a blessing. You know, if you're saved, you have a place. You know, the, the more I thought about that, 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 that thought came up in my mind several times because there's, there's just a few places in the Bible, places, there's a few times in the Bible when it talks about places. And one that came to my mind was this, Judas went to his own place, the Bible says. Let me tell you, that's not where I want to go. I don't want to go to Judas' place. I don't even want to go to my own place. I want to go to Jesus' place. That's what I want. I don't know about you. There's a, a beautiful illustration of this in in Genesis with the man Enoch. It's also recorded in Hebrews 11 when it says, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Now, I don't know if this is theologically the right way to, to say it, but you know, I've always heard preachers say, you know, Enoch walked with God. And they, they walked further and further and one day as they were walking, God said, Enoch, we're closer to my house than yours. I'm just gonna take you to my place. Now, we'll find out when we get to heaven exactly what all was involved there. But, but the picture is exactly right. God has prepared a place for us. It's his place. Uh, we don't want to go to our own place. We don't want to go to Judas' place. Um, th there's another verse in Matthew 25 where it talks about how that God ha has a place prepared for Satan. Matthew 25, 41 He says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Listen, the devil has a place. You know, hell is it's not made for us. But if you don't trust Christ, you'll go to Satan's place. And that won't be good company. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. The Bible says there's no light in hell, but there's burning. I don't understand that, but I believe it. It's not going to be a place where you're going to see your friends or, or worry about who's there or what's happened. It's going to be a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. That's not the place you want to go. And the Bible says there's a difference between believing and receiving. We were talking about this the other night. You know, a lot of people believe in God. That doesn't make you a Christian. The Bible says Satan believes in God and even trembles. He has an emotional response. You need to receive Christ as your Savior. I talk to people all the time, oh yeah, I believe in God, preacher. But have you received him? As many as receive him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. See, when we believe on his name, when we trust Jesus Christ as Savior, God says he prepares a place for us, his place. It's with him. What a blessing. The other verse that came to mind was Matthew 7, where he talks about, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, in John, he talks about uh, he's prepared a place and he's going to come again and receive us unto himself. This is just the opposite. He's not going to receive us unto himself. He's going to say, depart from me. I, I never knew you. You, you go to, to the devil's place. You go to your own place. Listen, that's, I hope that's not what you want. And I hope that you'll realize God has made it plain that Jesus is the way. You know, the world tries to confuse the message of Christmas. Uh, they'll make it this general, bland thing, you know, Christmas is all about giving. Well, listen, it was. It was Jesus gave his life. 
He didn't give you a little trinket. He gave his, his blood. God gave his, his son. You know, as, a, as a father, you come to realize what that meant. God gave his son. And God has prepared a place. Jesus is preparing. Jesus is reigning. What a blessing it is that we can know the Savior. But the third thing that, that I, I would share with you this morning that Jesus is doing, Jesus is not just preparing for the future. Jesus is serving us now. The Bible says, as our great high priest. I turn, if, if you would, to Hebrews there, chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. We'll look at quite a few verses here in Hebrews. You won't understand the Old Testament unless you understand Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that's passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. It's exactly what we're talking about. Jesus has gone back to heaven. He's functioning as our great high priest. Now, what a blessing. And the Bible says there in verse 15, we have, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. We have a sympathetic high priest. We have a sympathetic Savior. Uh, back in chapter 2, verse 17, he, he gives even more detail. Hebrews 2, 17. Wherefore, in all things it behoved him, that's Jesus, to be made like unto his brethren, to be like us, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make rec reconciliation for the sins of the people, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. He's able to succor them that are tempted. Jesus has gone through the temptations that we face. He understands what it is to be tempted. And, and yet, in Hebrews 4.15, it says, He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's the important thing. See, it's not one failure talking to another. It's the victor talking to people and saying, Follow in my, my trail. Come, come after me. And Jesus uh, is able, he uses a, it's not a common word anymore, sucker. It just means to help. You can run to him for help, and he'll, he'll help you. I, I remember seeing a little kid run into something at church and looking around, looking around, ran here, ran there, and then he saw his mom and burst into tears, you know. <laughs> Had to wait till he saw his mom. Well, that, that's kind of the, the picture there. Life hurts, but we have a Savior right now. We don't have to find him. We don't have to go somewhere else. He's right here. He's right now. He's our great high priest. He cares. He has sympathy for what we're going through. As well, in the end of verse 15, he's sinless. He's our, he's our sinless high priest. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. It makes a very important point here. Hebrews 7, 26 for such an high priest become a, became us, who, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And listen to this. Who needeth not daily as those high priests, the, the old, the, the human high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. See, before the high priest had to offer two sacrifices. First for himself, then for the people. Not Jesus. He didn't have to offer a sacrifice for himself. He's, man, what a description there. Holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. Yeah, he's the perfect lamb of God. Uh, and he's also the, the great high priest. He offered no sacrifice for himself. He, he's sympathetic. He's sinless. The Bible says, verse 22 there, he's eternal. For by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. They had a rule. If you were dead, you couldn't be the high priest. We have the same rule at this church. If you're dead, you can't be the pastor. <laughs> now, I laugh. I mean, death is not a, a funny thing. But over and over, the, the high priest would die. They'd have to have a new one. Not Jesus. This man, verse 24, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. We don't have to keep adjusting to a new priest and how he goes about things. Our great high priest is eternal. And he, he's perfect. And he's representing us. Verse 25, 
Hebrews 7, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus is praying for you. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Jesus is praying for you. You know, sometimes we get down in the dumps, you know, we get discouraged and whatever, and we forget about all the good things God is doing. Listen, this life is not what it's about. It's about eternity. And we need to remember Jesus is praying for us. Jesus has a purpose in all these things we don't understand. God is doing something in our lives. In Hebrews 9, 24 and in other places, it tells us that he's our mediator. Hebrews 9, 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figure of the true. He, said he, he didn't go into some physical on earth tabernacle, but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Um, he, he's the one who appears for us in heaven. In uh, Timothy it says we have one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. At John, at 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, calls him our advocate. If you can picture a courtroom scene, well, Jesus is our advocate. We, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And, and he's the one who's sustaining us. What a wonderful Savior we have. Hebrews 13, uh, verse 20. I'll give you a couple of verses there. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the, of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Jesus is working in you. We have an everlasting covenant based upon our everlasting God, our everlasting Savior, His everlasting Word. Uh, in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You know, sometimes we pray things that we don't really need to pray. You know, Lord, be with us. We've got His promise. He is with us if we're saved. God knows what we mean, and the Holy Spirit helps us with our prayers and, and so on, but... Uh, we need to understand that uh, Jesus is our great high priest. Different, you know, different than your, I am a pastor to you. Different than in the Old Testament where they had their priests and, and their high priests. Uh, he's eternal. He understands. And, and he, uh, he is able to help us in time of need. You know, I want to bring it down to this. The key in all of this is, do you know him? Do you know him? People try to make this a religious formula. I remember we had a, a family, a, a lady, that uh, she said, yeah, I, I said the words. And I went home and told my husband, he said the words. You know, that, that was how she expressed becoming a, a Christian. It's not some mumbo-jumbo. It's not some impersonal contract. It's a relationship. It's knowing the Lord. That's why God was manifest in the flesh. So we could see him. And Jesus' present ministry is his love and concern for you. That's what Jesus is doing right now. God became a man so that we could know him. You know, there's, there's such blessing to know. And it's bittersweet to see what Jesus has done for us. You know, he understands our sorrow. He understands our grief. The Bible says he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He understands our pain. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you know him? Do you know him? He's the all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipotent God who was manifest in the flesh. He lived. He died. He rose again. He ascended back to heaven, glorified with the Father. You know, like we've said, He's the mediator. He's our advocate. He's the way, the truth, the life. He's ever living to make intercession for us. Do you know Him? Do you know Him? Uh, my prayer is that you'll know my Savior. Uh, there's, a, there's a song in our hymnal. I'm praying for you. Let me find it here. This, this is my, my prayer for you. I have a Savior. 
He's pleading in glory. A dear loving Savior, though earth friends be, f be few. And now he's watching in tenderness o'er me, but oh, that my Savior were your Savior too. I have a Father. To me, he's given a hope for eternity, blessed and true. And soon he'll call me to meet him in heaven, but oh, that he'd let me bring you with me too. That's our prayer this morning. Uh, Jesus, so much, he, he's the author of, of our past. He's the author of our present and the future. But Jesus has a ministry right now. And Jesus uh, wants you to know him. He wants to be your, your Savior. He wants to be your Father. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that, that believe on his name. I'm praying for you. Let me ask you, if we could, to, to go to the Lord in, in prayer this morning. What a blessing to know what Jesus is and what he's doing for us now. With their heads bowed in, in, in an attitude of prayer, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart this morning. Maybe you realize that if, if you were to die, you're not sure if you'd go to heaven or hell or, or what would happen. Uh, is, are there any this morning who, by uplifted hand, no one looking around, but just by uplifted hand, would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm not sure about my salvation. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. We are so grateful. Lord, we know... Well, we don't really know how it, what it costs you, but Lord, we read how you came, and Lord, we, uh, we're so grateful that you died for our sins, that you're that Lamb of God. Father, help us. Help us to know you. Pray if there are the, any here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would, uh, would call them to yourself. Father, help us as a church to be a light in this dark world. Help us to be the people for you that we should be. Lord, help us to live thankful, grateful lives for what you are and what you've done for us. God bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.